Hi, superstars. It is time for English. We are on unit four, week one. Our essential question is, what do people use to do their jobs? And our theme is time for work. This week, we're going to read to find out about different people who work in our community and special things they use to do their jobs. Our, in our community, we have workers who use special equipment or they wear special uniforms. Can you name a community worker and tell what kind of uniform that person wears? Maybe a postal worker, someone who delivers the mail. They're called mail carriers. They wear post office uniforms. How about firefighters? They wear special uniforms also. Even police officers have special uniforms. Let's look at this man in the picture here. He looks like a baker. It looks like he's wearing an apron to keep his clothes clean. He has a chef hat and he has these mitts that are going to protect his hand from the hot pans when he's baking. Let's listen to a video about time for work. Time for work. What do people use to do their jobs? Workers need different tools to do their jobs. Let's see what these workers use. The baker uses his hands and a rolling pin to shape the dough. The doctor uses a stethoscope to listen to the girl's heartbeat. This artist uses a paintbrush to paint sculptures. The mechanic uses a tool to help him remove a tire. People use tools every day to do their jobs. Let's look at these different tools community workers might use. Bakers use spoons and a whisk to stir ingredients together. Who do you think uses this? There's paint. What else do you see on there? Paint brushes. Painters use brushes to mix paint. Painters mix paint on a tray called a palette. So painters use these tools to do their job. How about this? What does this look like? Workers use a screwdriver to tighten and loosen screws. A screwdriver. And how about this? What do you think this is called? Workers use a tape measure to measure an object's height and length. This is a tape measure. They use it to measure. All right, we're going to read a poem about firefighters and some things that they use to do their job. Let's read together. Firefighters, up onto their loud, loud truck, the firefighters climb. They're in an awful hurry. They move in quick, quick time. They're going to put out a fire. Help is on the way. They'll get there with their water hose and spray, spray, spray. So what tool did the firefighters use in the poem? They used a water hose so they could spray, 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 put out the fire. All right, so we're gonna learn about the different tools that people in our community use to do their job. All right, before we continue reading about the different jobs and equipment that people in our community use, let's go over some words to know 
These are vocabulary words. The first word is utensils. Utensils, can you say that with me? Utensils. Utensils are tools we use to cook or eat something. An example would be, they used forks because these were the best utensils for eating pieces of watermelon. What kind of utensils would you use to stir soup? What would you use to stir soup? Would you use a spoon? Yes, we would use a spoon to stir soup. Let's go to the next one. The next word is uniform. A uniform is special clothing that workers wear on their jobs. An example, the baker wears a white uniform with a hat. What kind of uniform would you like to wear and why? All right, let's go to the next vocabulary word. All right, equipment. Can you say equipment with me? Equipment. Equipment is special tools that someone uses to do a job. The gardener's equipment includes a shovel and a watering can. What kind of equipment does the art teacher use? What do you think the art teacher would use? Maybe paint brushes, paint. All right, let's go to our next vocabulary word. Expect, say it with me. Expect. If you think something will happen, you expect it. I expect that we will read a new book today. What do you expect to do the next time you go to the playground? What do you do at the playground? Do you play? Go to our next vocabulary word, remained. Say it with me, remained. Something that remained in a place stayed there. The baby kangaroo remained in its mother's pouch for a long time. Who remained at home today instead of coming to school? remained. All right, our next word is you. You. This is the word you. Say it with me. You. How do you feel dot the word you is spelled Y-O-U. Can you spell it with me? Y-O-U. Let's write the word in the air as we say each letter. Y-O-U. You, good job. We are now going to read about the different kinds of shoes that community workers wear to do their jobs. What kind of shoes do you think we're going to read about? We're gonna find out once we start reading. Now, I wanna remind you that as we read, you can find details in the text and in the photographs. The photographs sometimes give information that is not told by the author's words. So you can ask questions before and during reading 
to help you better understand the text. And you can also look for answers to your questions in the text and in the photographs as you're reading. So this is a story about whose shoes? Whose shoes? And it is a question, right? There's a question mark right here at the end. Whose shoes? That's the title. And right here, it says a shoe for every job. That's a subtitle. Now, as we read, we always read from the left side to the right, right? And we also read from top to bottom. Let's read the author, Stephen R. Swinburne. Now this is the author and the photographer's name. So the same person wrote the words and also took the photographs in this book. This story, Whose Shoes, is an informational text. That means it gives facts or real information about people, places, or events. So informational texts usually have photographs. All right, let's turn the page and let's listen. Whose Shoes? A Shoe for Every Job by Stephen R. Swinburne. Most people wear shoes. But some people don't. The first shoes you ever wore were soft and very small. If it's cold outside, you wear boots. If it's hot, you wear flip-flops. All right, so over here on page eight, right here, I heard that when it's cold outside, you can wear boots. And in the photo, I see that there's also snow on the ground. Boots can help you stay warm and dry in the snow. All right, let's continue. Your favorite shoes might be blue or silver. People wear different shoes for different jobs. Can you tell whose shoes go with what job? Whose so, shoes? All right, I, I read, we read together, and we heard that people wear different shoes for different jobs. I see the pretty shoes on page 13, right here. And the text asks, whose shoes? We'll keep reading so that we can find the answer. A ballerina. Whose shoes? All right, look for the details in the photographs. That's going to help you learn more about the information. So let's see. Do, what do you see in page 15 over here? What is this? It's a cow, right? So what do you think cows eat? Well, what's here on the ground? That is hay. A farmer whose shoes.
All right, on page 17, it says, whose shoes? I look at the picture and I see part of a truck. I see big pants and big boots. We'll keep reading to find out whose shoes are they? A firefighter. Whose shoes? All right, so when we read the previous page, I asked myself, whose shoes those were? But we found our answer. The shoes belong to a firefighter, right? All right, let's see whose shoes these belong to. An Army National Guard soldier. Whose shoes? Whose shoes do you think those are? All right, look for details in the photographs, right? That'll help you. A soccer player. Whose shoes? Are you looking for details to figure out whose shoes those are? What do you think? A construction worker. So I wonder what else is part of a construction worker's uniform? Well, we can find the answer in the photograph right there on page 24. A construction worker needs a hard hat to stay safe. Let's continue. Whose shoes? Hmm. Whose shoes do you think those are? A post office worker. All right, how about here? Whose shoes? All right, we're going to have to turn the page to find out. A chef. That was a chef's shoes. All right, let's look at this. Whose shoes? Look at those pink shoes. Hmm. Can you guess whose shoes those are? Look for details. All right, let's see if you're right. A clown. Were you correct? Those were clown shoes. Whose shoes will you wear one day? So whose shoes do you think you'll wear one day? All right, let's go to our close reading companion and open up to page 37. All right, make sure you put your name and the date on the top, okay? All right, we are talking about the story that we just read, Whose Shoes? So at the top, it says over here, it says, what clues tell you why the boy is wearing boots? All right, let's go back and look at the boy wearing boots over here. So why do you think, or what clues tell you why the boy's wearing boots? Well, it's snowing, right? It looks cold and he's all bundled up. So draw a picture of the clues that you get from this picture that tells why the boy is wearing boots. All right, so I want you to draw a picture and then it asks the boy wears boots because, why do you think the boy is wearing boots? Does it look like it's snowy? and cold 
Yes, so the boy is wearing boots because it's snowy and cold. So you're going to write that. All right, so you can draw anything over here. It could have boots, snow, or a boy in winter clothing, okay? And then down here, the boy wears boots because it is snowy and cold. Make sure you have your first and last name and the date at the top of this page. All right, let's go to the next page. Let's turn to page 38, our close reading companion. Now it says over here, how is the text on these pages of the story different from the text at the beginning of the story? So let's go back and look at our story. Let's look at page 12 right here. Okay, so it says people wear different shoes for different jobs. Can you tell whose shoe goes with what job? And then it says, whose shoes? And the question in our close reading companion on page 38 said, how is the text on these pages different from the text at the beginning of the story. So let's look at the pages at the beginning of the story. See, this page has some sentences and it has a question, whose shoes? But let's look at the beginning. So at the beginning of the story, it had a sentence, for instance, on page five, it says most people wear shoes. On page six, it says, but some people don't. Here's page seven with the baby. The first shoes you ever wore were soft and very small. All right, now let's look at the pages right here, 12 and 13. So how is the text on these pages different from the text at the beginning of the story? We're gonna circle yes or no to answer the questions. So do you see how there's sentences? And then there is a question, whose shoes? All right, let's go back to our close reading companion and try to answer the question. All right, we're right here on page 38. How is the text on these pages different from the text at the beginning of the story? So we are going to circle yes or no to answer the questions. So how is the text different? So remember the pages I showed you before, was the text bigger? So it's asking how is the text different? Is it bigger? Did the, did the text or the words seem bigger to you? No, they were the same size. All right, number two. Does it ask questions? Yes, remember it says whose shoes? So it does, it asks a question. Is the text or the writing smaller from the beginning of the story? No, it was not, it was the same. Same size of writing or text, but the only difference was it asks a question, whose shoes? So right here, the text and photos help me find, what did it help you find? The text and the photos in the story. 
It helped you find the answer to the question. So right here, we're going to write, it helps me find the answer, the answer to the question. All right, oops, finish my N. All right, so make sure you have your first name, last name, and the date. Good job, superstars. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.